do you use? Spoilers. 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 I like that word. I thought you might. Hello everyone, uh, you were probably expecting a bit of a different voice here, but uh, no, I'm a different YouTuber, Ace Creeper, uh, guest hosting this episode of A Brief History. Now, don't, don't turn off yet, you never know, I might actually be good, who knows, you never, you know, just, just stay around, you might enjoy it. Anyway, welcome to another edition of A Brief History, and today we'll be looking at one of the most mysterious entities in the Doctor Who universe. The Valyard. Now before we look into a brief history of this character, it is worth pointing out that much of the Valyard's history is still unknown. His origins are very much debated to this day, as there are still many conflicting accounts. As well as this, exactly what he is is up for debate as well, with no single source giving any explicit confirmation. Some sources also give accounts of events which may be contradicted by other sources and events, which helps tremendously. <laughs> And as such, the contents of this video will be presented as it's been told in various different narrative formats, conflicting information and all. So it's totally up to you, the audience, to make up your own minds about how you see the Valiar, what he actually is, and how he came about. We as the audience first meet the Valiar in the mysterious planet. Am I late for something? I was beginning to fear you had lost yourself. Sit down. However, his beginnings go back way before that in terms of his own personal chronology which incidentally is how the information in this video will be presented. Before the Valyard's supposed creation between, as the Master puts it, the Doctor's twelfth and final incarnations, various incarnations of the Doctor did have encounters with him. In the novel Millennial Rites, the sixth Doctor, for whom the events take place before Trial of a Time Lord, finds himself in London, in an alternate timeline. Through the use of manifested magical powers to suit the alternate universe's unstable laws of physics. He finds himself beginning to transform into the Valyard, or at least this alternate universe's version of him. And through the universe's unique properties, the process was eventually completed with the Sixth Doctor becoming the Valyard. However, with the help of the TARDIS, the Sixth Doctor was able to reverse the process, but he was left with the fact that whilst he acknowledged the Valyard's argument that ruthlessness was sometimes a necessary evil, he rejected the idea that he should take enjoyment from such actions. The novel Head Games reveals that when the Seventh Doctor slept, he dreamed of his other selves, and heard the Valyard stating that when the Doctor's strength was at its lowest, he would reach out from the recesses of his subconscious and seize his body. When the Eighth Doctor looked into a Tomorrow Window from the aptly named novel The Tomorrow Windows, he saw the Valyard standing alone on a sand dune, his cloak flapping in the wind and strangely his hair in a ponytail, hinting that at some point the Valyard would grow his hair longer or, as some fans theorise, would gain the ability to regenerate into a new incarnation with longer hair. Now we get on to the Valyard's actual origin. So, as previously mentioned, it is up to individual interpretation to decide what is true and what isn't true. Hey everyone, it's Jimmy here. Haha, <laughs> you don't get away from me that easily. I would just like to very quickly say at this point that I do have my own fan theories video about my own ideas of the origins of the Valyard. Obviously it is a fan theory, so it is not canon, but please go and check that out. It would mean a lot to me if you do. I will link it in the description and also the pinned comment. But now we go back to Ace with the real origins of the Valyard. As previously mentioned, the Master described the Valyard's origins in the Ultimate Four as... The Valyard is an amalgamation of the darker sides of your nature, somewhere between your twelfth and final incarnation. With the novel The Eight Doctors suggesting he was brought into being by the High Council, however, the reference book A Brief History of the Time Lord suggests that they played no part in his creation but were still aware of his identity. And the reference book The Doctor, His Lives and Times implying the High Council merely plucked the Valyard from the Doctor's time stream. Another account was a story told by the Valyard himself in the Big Finish audio Trial of the Valyard, where according to him, he was created as a time tot during the period in which the 13th incarnation of the Doctor was trying to break the regeneration limit. However, upon meeting his future self, the Sixth Doctor discovers that the supposed, and incidentally male, 13th Doctor was in fact the Valyard in disguise. As such, this made the tale of his origins highly questionable, but as the Sixth Doctor suggested himself, there may have been a grain of truth to his tale. The novelisation of The Ultimate Foe expands somewhat on the Master's reveal, with him stating, The Valyard is your penultimate reincarnation, somewhere between your twelfth and thirteenth regeneration. 
The Doctor's penultimate reincarnation is the Tenth Doctor, after the Stolen Earth slash the Journey's End regeneration. But also, at this point, he does create a Metacrisis Tenth Doctor, and a popular fan theory is that he will become the Valyard. However, we're gonna skip that for the moment, as we'll be coming back to that later. Another interpretation of the Valyard created between two incarnations is that he is a rogue Watcher. The Watcher concept was also suggested in The Time Traveller's Companion, a supplement for the Doctor Who Adventures in Space and Time, the role-playing game. And this theory was also made note of by the Sixth Doctor in The Trial of the Valyard. But whilst it was not confirmed nor denied explicitly, the Sixth Doctor hinted that the Valyard being a rogue Watcher was unlikely. A third account was yet again presented in a big finish story, The Brink of Death, which Time Lord technician Jeanster, I've probably butchered that name, but go with it, revealed that the Valyard was created by the Time Lords using Black Ops technology, possibly as a weapon. However, it was once again revealed later that Jeanster was in fact the Valyard in disguise, who refused to reveal whether the claims of his origins Jeanster made were real, or in fact if Jeanster had even been real herself or him in disguise all along. Later in the Big Finish Bernie Summerfield story, Every Dark Thought, the Valyard himself states that he splintered from the Doctor before his final incarnation, and as a casual imbalance, only has one life and cannot regenerate. Regardless of his true origins, however, at some point the Valyard was created, and after accidentally uncovering the Ravalox affair and the corruption of the High Council, the Sixth Doctor was put on trial, with the Valyard acting as prosecutor in exchange for the Doctor's seven remaining regenerations. As seen in the Mysterious Planet and Mind Warp, he presented extracts from the Matrix as evidence showing the Sixth Doctor violating Time Lord's non-interference policy. We have just witnessed a sequence in the Doctor's history which illustrated perfectly his almost gleeful pleasure in interfering in the development of alien life forms. I object! Unbeknownst to the jury present, but as the Sixth Doctor suspected, the Valyard had tempered with the Matrix extracts to try and show the Sixth Doctor in the worst possible light, and secure a guilty verdict in order to ensure he gained the Sixth Doctor's remaining regenerations. However, in Terror of the Vervoids, the Valyard presented an event from the Sixth Doctor's feature in which he stopped the Vervoids from taking over the inhabitants of the Hyperion 3 space liner, but at the cost of wiping out the entire species. An act which the Valyard added to the Sixth Doctor's trial as a charge of genocide. Charge! must now be genocide. However, before the trial proceeded, as revealed in the novel The Eight Doctors, somehow the Valyard managed to create an alternate timeline where the Sixth Doctor would be judged guilty and arranged to oversee his execution, with an alternate timeline becoming real once the Doctor had been shot. Luckily, the Sixth Doctor was saved from execution by the Eighth Doctor, and despite the Sixth Doctor being wiped from existence due to the timelines being restored, before he was, both the Sixth and Eighth Doctors set up an inquiry into the trial using their previous role as president. After his trial, the inquiry would lead to a dismissal of the corrupt High Council and the temporary restoration of Barusa to guide Gallifrey through the turmoil. But that's another video. With the timeline restored, and after the Master's intervention and revelation of the Valyard's true identity, the story of the Ultimate Four showed the Sixth Doctor face off in a three-way duel between himself, the Master, and the Valyard, with the latter of the three seemingly perishing inside the Matrix. After this, all charges against the Sixth Doctor were dropped. However, unbeknownst to him, Mel, the Inquisitor, and the jury, the Valyard survived, somehow having taken over the Keeper of the Matrix. <laughs> now we move back to the big finished story, Trial of the Valyard. Well, the Valyard was later found on the moon of Itaho by the Time Lords. Captured by them in order to reveal the research into breaking the regeneration limit the supposed 13th Doctor had performed there, he refused and was placed on trial with a faked charge of having hacked into the Matrix. Asking the 6th Doctor to be his defence, he spun the tale of his supposed origins and after a heretical tirade regarding Rassilon's regeneration limit, was sentenced to immediate termination. However, the Valyard was able to fake his execution by escaping through a hidden door to the Matrix and made his way back to Etaro with the Sixth Doctor and the Inquisitor hot on his heels. There, he disguised himself as a fake 13th Doctor and tricked the Sixth Doctor into taking the bomb from him with the intention of getting revenge on both him and the Inquisitor. Luckily, the Sixth Doctor and the Inquisitor were able to escape, but unfortunately, so was the Valyard, once again escaping to the Matrix through another hidden door. The novel Mission, Impractical, saw the Valyard disguise himself as a man called Zimmerman and sent assassins after the Sixth Doctor as well as selling various Time Lord secrets. However, his plans failed when the Sixth Doctor investigated Zimmerman's actions, although remaining unaware of his identity as the Valyard, 
and fooled the assassins into believing he was dead by temporarily freezing himself in time between heartbeats. At this point in the narrative, the events of Big Finish's The Sixth Doctor, The Last Adventure, take place. For the Valyard, the events of this set of stories takes place somewhat out of sequence with some events in the final story taking place in between others. So the following information will be told in the sequence the Valyard experienced them rather than the listener. It is also worth noting that during these events the Valyard has somehow gained access to a TARDIS, which was either a twisted future version of the Doctor's TARDIS, according to the novel Matrix, or, as the story Every Dark Thor suggests, which we'll come to later, it might have been another TARDIS entirely. Regardless of this fact, however, the first story of the last adventure, The End of the Line, reveals that after a previous encounter with the Doctor, the Valyar was left in a weakened state, not even able to maintain his normal appearance. Travelling to the parallel sex dimension Nexus, he intended to use its properties to restore himself. However, after the Master arrived, intending to use the Nexus for his own means, this caused different universes to intersect at the Nexus. Luckily for the Valyard, the Sixth Doctor and his companion Constance arrived, although by disguising himself as a man named Tim Hope, the Valyard was able to avoid the Sixth Doctor recognising who he really was, but also work from behind the scenes to help defeat the Master. Following the Master's defeat, the Valyard confronted him with a warning to leave the Doctor alone, as he didn't want anyone or anything to interfere with his plans for revenge. With the Dimensional Nexus finally restored, the Valyard was able to mostly restore himself and regain his normal appearance. Now here, we actually skip ahead to the fourth and final story of the last adventure, The Brink of Death, as it is revealed that between the events of the first and second stories of the last adventure, the Valyard travelled to the moon of Plestinius to save a native psychic species called the Nathimus, who fed on thoughts. Having saved them, they pledged their loyalty to him. However, it was revealed by the Valyard that his saving of them wasn't out of compassion, but so he could use them for his own means. His plan was to use their psychic abilities to take control of the Matrix and overwrite every Time Lord who ever existed, and shape Time Lord society in his own image. In return, he promised the Nathamus the mind of the Sixth Doctor to feed on. Moving back now to the second story of the last adventure, the Red House saw the Valyard travelling to a planet in the 31st century with the intention of stealing a psychic extractor, being used on the planet to remove feral urges of the native werewolves. When the Sixth Doctor and Charlie Pollard arrived, the Valyard Valyard used his knowledge of Charlie's past with the 8th Doctor to trick her into distracting the 6th Doctor. Whilst she did this, the Valyard gained access to the 6th Doctor's TARDIS and implanted the Nathamus into the symbiotic nuclei of the TARDIS, where they would stay and feast on the 6th Doctor's mind until they were able to gain control of the Matrix. At this point, we again return to the 4th story of the Brink of Death, as whilst in the process of implanting the Nathamus, the Valyard was confronted by a future version of the 6th Doctor, who demanded to know what the Valyard's plans were. Believing that the future Sixth Doctor's appearance was a sign his plan would succeed, the Valyard allowed the future Sixth Doctor to communicate with Anathemus. However, the future Sixth Doctor was unable to stop the Valyard and was dragged back into the Matrix from when he had previously escaped. In the third story, Stage Fright, the Valyard travels to Victorian London and posed as an actor named Timothy Yardvale and convinced the Doctor's old friend, Henry Jargo, to rent him the new Regency Theatre under the guise of staging a play. Luring actors into the theatre, he had them play out regenerations of the first five incarnations of the Doctor, with the Valyard himself playing the role of the past Doctors. Using the previously acquired psychic extractor, the Valyard absorbed the negative emotions of the actors and killed them, intending to fully restore himself using the energy of the negative emotions. Leaving the bodies in easy to find locations, he succeeded in drawing the Sixth Doctor and companion Flip Jackson to London before kidnapping Flip to act as Zoe in a twisted version of the Second Doctor's regeneration. Using the psychic extractor on the Sixth Doctor, the Valyard was able to manipulate the Sixth Doctor into feeling more negative emotions and restore himself further. Flip, however, managed to distract the Sixth Doctor, putting an end to the Valyard's plan. However, the combined energies of both the actors and the Doctor were enough to complete his restoration. Finally, we head back to the fourth and final story of the Brink of Death. With the Nathamus gaining access to the Matrix, the Valyard was able to take over the Sixth Doctor's life and use his newfound position to begin his plan to take over and replace the Time Lords with himself. However, an echo of the Sixth Doctor remained in the Matrix and managed to disrupt the Valyard's plans by telling his past self through the TARDIS's telepathic circuits to fly into the beams of radiation from La Curtia. This ended up not only killing the Nathamus before they could completely link with him, but also resulted in the Sixth Doctor's regeneration into the Seventh Doctor, leading, according to this account, 
to the events of Time and the Rani. These events left the Valyard trapped in the Matrix with the echo of the Sixth Doctor, who stated he would rather die than have a future as the Valyard. And with his regeneration into the Seventh Doctor shifting the timelines, the echo of the Sixth Doctor slowly faded away, leaving the Valyard trapped in the Matrix, alone, and once again reduced to a weakened form. The Valyard was next seen having somehow escaped the Matrix, travelling with Bernie Summerfield in his TARDIS in the Big Finish story, Every Dark Thought. Having seemingly adopted the guise of the Doctor, but not using the name himself, the Valyard joined Bernice on a dig, claiming to have intentions of defeating a gestalt named the Karagot. The Valyard claimed to have been tracking the Karagot to stop a war, with it later being revealed that the Karagot, under the belief of the Valyard was actually the Doctor, wished to integrate him into their ranks in order to gain his intelligence. However, it was later revealed that he came into the dig to steal a serum with the intention of using it to prolong his own life, and give himself a way to regenerate. However, once again, his plans were foiled, and the Valyard was once again killed, or at least seemed to be. The Valyard's penultimate appearance is in the novel Matrix. In this novel, the Valyard faces off against the Seventh Doctor, revealing his mastery of the Dark Matrix, a counterpart of the true Matrix that housed the most evil and twisted thoughts of dead Time Lords. Under the guise of Jack the Ripper, the Valyard used the Ripper murders to defeat the Dark Matrix, with the intention of not only using its power to give himself a true body, but also corrupt the Doctor's timeline, such as causing the First Doctor to destroy the Time Lords upon leaving Gallifrey, the Fourth Doctor to destroy the Daleks on Skaro, and the Fifth Doctor letting Perry die to save himself on Androzani Minor. These corrupted incarnations then became twisted wraiths in the Valyard's TARDIS, whom he used to animate golems which subsequently attacked the Seventh Doctor. After travelling to London in 1963, the Seventh Doctor found himself once again in an alternate timeline, resulting in the Valyard being in London as Jack the Ripper. After finding out about this timeline from alternate versions of Ian Chesterton and Barbara Wright, he travelled further back to 1888 to investigate the Ripper murders having realised this was the divergent point of the timelines. However, the Seventh Doctor almost fell under the Valyard's influence, and after a brief period of amnesia, with the TARDIS helping him restore his mind, he was able to spare Ace from being the Ripper's next victim. After tracking down the Valyard, now calling himself the Ripper to a church, and confronting wraiths of twelve of his other incarnations, the Seventh Doctor chased him into a tomb, which was really the Valyard's TARDIS, in disguise. Provoking the Dark Matrix into rebelling against the Valyard's control, and after fighting the Ripper slash the Valyard atop the church, the subsequent release of energy from the Dark Matrix along with the destruction of the Valyard's TARDIS once again seemingly killed the Valyard and restored history to normal. The Valyard's final appearance at the time of recording this video has come as recently as August 2019 in Volume 3 of Big Finish's 8th Doctor Time Wars series story, The War Valyard. In this story, an older looking Valyard, but in a copy of the 8th Doctor's clothes, is reconstituted from the 8th Doctor after he uses a transmat. Whilst many of the High Council were in favour of destroying him, many of them saw his potential, possessing all of the Doctor's intelligence but without the burden of morality, a perfect weapon to fight in the Time War. He was sent to the planet Grav, where the Daleks were in possession of a weapon that could wipe out the Time Lords from existence but leave the Daleks able to remember them. Instead, the Valyard was instructed to use the weapon to destroy the Daleks, but doing so it also damaged his own memory as well as wiping out the native Gravarians. And the Dalek time strategist who was present managed to escape the destruction through a rift. In order to cover up their actions, the Time Lord put Grav in a time lock, trapping the Valyard there. With his memory damaged and the weapon itself providing an illusion of memory to the Valyard, the Daleks and Gavarians all appeared to still be alive. But believing himself to be the Doctor, the Valyard was forced to repeat his mission over and over again for 200 years, but he was still haunted by memories of his true self using the weapon for the first time and laughing at the death and destruction around him. After a psychic vision of these events reached the 8th Doctor, he managed to break the time lock and discovered what happened, encountering both the Fox younger Valyard in his trial clothes and the true older Valyard, who believed himself to be the Doctor. Eventually, the 8th Doctor manages to convince the Valyard of his true identity and tried to convince him to leave through the same rift the Dalek time strategist escaped through. However, realising that if he leaves, he will once again become his true evil self and the Gravarians will also be permanently wiped out as they now only exist because of his memories of them. The Valyard decides to remain on Grav in the time lock, reliving his mission over and over again, as there, he can finally be a better man. He can finally be the Doctor. Although the War Valyard story is the last we know of the Valyard's life chronologically at the present time, he carried a lasting legacy, 
and has been mentioned or referenced in various other media. The Big Finish story, The Carrionite Curse, saw the Carrionites know of the Valyard as a name for the Doctor and taunted his sixth incarnation with this information, saying his hatred could consume him. However, the sixth Doctor insisted this was only a possibility and not a certain future. The comic Four Doctors revealed that the tenth Doctor still considered the Valyard to be a potential future incarnation, and after confirming the eleventh Doctor to be his final incarnation, initially showed great distrust of the twelfth Doctor, believing he shouldn't exist and could possibly be the Valyard. The Doctor would also be referenced as the Valyard in some form by other entities, such as the Great Intelligence in Name of the Doctor, and he will have other names before the end. Storm, the Beast, the Valyard, and Testimony in Twice Upon a Time. Earlier on in the video, it was mentioned that there was an idea that the Tenth Doctor could be the Valyard, with some fans believing that the Metacrisis Tenth Doctor could also be him. However, the comic The Forgotten shows the Tenth Doctor encountering the Metacrisis Tenth Doctor, who claims to be the Valyard. However, almost immediately, the Tenth Doctor sees through this ruse and denounces him, forcing the alleged Valyard to reveal its identity as Escartus of Tacitire, an alien parasite feeding on the Doctor's mind as he lays unconscious in the TARDIS. As a side note as well, it is worth noting that the Doctor is referred to as the Valyard in Name of the Doctor and by testimony, both pieces of dialogue suggest these are future names for him at those times, which further implies that by the time of both the 11th and 12th Doctor's respective existences, the Valyard does not yet exist. This is supported by the comic Four Doctors, which as previously mentioned shows the 10th Doctor believing that the Valyard still takes place in his own personal future, with the events of the comic taking place after the events of Stolen Earth and Journey's End. The comic also briefly goes on to show an alternate timeline where, after letting Wilf die in the end of time, the Tenth Doctor became the Time Lord Victorious and ruler of the universe. However, there is nothing to suggest, hint, or imply that he has become the Valyard. Off screen, it has also been confirmed that the Metacrisis Tenth Doctor does not become the Valyard. This has been supported by the Journey's End episode plot and dialogue, where the Metacrisis Tenth Doctor is confirmed to not only have one life, but will grow old and die in the course of a normal human lifespan. The Valyard was also known to exist in an alternate timeline, shown in the Big Finish Unbound story, He Jests at Scars. This story takes place under the premise of what if the Valyard had defeated the Sixth Doctor in the Matrix in the Ultimate Four, and sees the Valyard not only taking over the Doctor's life, but also stealing his TARDIS. In this new life, the Valyard becomes more akin to the meddling monk, rewriting time as he sees fit. However, ignoring the consequences of his meddling leads to him inevitably killing the Fourth Doctor, and not only jeopardising his own future, but also the very fabric of the universe itself. Lastly as well, I'll just briefly mention the Dream Lord from the Series 5 episode, Amy's Choice. This character does seem to share traits with the Valyard, most notably also being created from the darker side of the Doctor. Dream Lord was me. Psychic pollen, it's a mind parasite, it feeds on everything dark in you, gives it a voice, turns it against you and shown at the end of the episode to still dwell within him. However, at present time, there is nothing to officially suggest or imply that the Valyard and the Dream Lord are one in the same. It is again one of those pieces of information that is open to individual interpretation. But that brings to close the end of another edition of A Brief History. Thank you so much for listening. This has been a very long recording session for me, um, and hopefully probably not too long of a video to bore you to death, but I've tried my best. I've, you know, done as well as I can. I do have a YouTube channel if you are willing enough to check it out. I am Ace Creeper. There should be a link in the description. Crossing my fingers. Um, I do Doctor Who Series 12 news. I do discussion videos. I'm currently reacting to Torchwood, if that's what you're interested in. Just a variety of different things, mostly Doctor Who related. So if you are interested and you want to help me out, you can always go and check me out and Check out a few videos and maybe subscribe if you're interested. So that's great. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to Captain Jimmy Pie because he's a legend. Thank you so much for inviting me on the channel. It's been a blast. I've really enjoyed this. I've learned some stuff myself. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. See you all hopefully in the future. Bye bye.